723 is the time to talk to our friend Jane King at the NASDAQ in New York. And we're talking about student loan debt. Uh, Jane, where does Indiana rank here? We talk about this a lot, right? Scotty Kyle, good morning. Indiana's student debt load is actually a bit heavier than most other states. Now, the state ranks 13th according to Wallet Hub. Grant and student work opportunities weren't as plentiful as other states, according to this survey. Now, at the end of the first quarter of 2018, total outstanding college loan balances stood at about one and a half trillion. That's according to the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Indiana did fare well on a list of best states to do business. CNBC ranked the Hoosier State 11th best. Breaking it down, Indiana number one for infrastructure and ranked high for cost of doing business as well as the overall state economy. Virginia, by the way, number one on that list. And there is a new list of best states for retirement. A lot of lists these, uh, these days. Uh, the best states for retirement heavy in Midwest farm states. Nebraska number one on this list. It was put together by bank rate. And they rank states on affordability, crime, culture, weather, and wellness. Rounding out the top five, Iowa, Missouri, South Dakota, and Florida coming in number five. Indiana 29th. Okay, AT&T said it will start to automatically block robocalls and alert customers of suspected spam calls for free. AT&T customers will be automatically enrolled, and then new customers will have the service as soon as they sign up. Existing customers will have it added over the coming months. Customers who want to decline the service will be able to opt out of it. And stocks closed at record highs yesterday. The Fed chairman testified seemed willing to cut interest rates. So a big sigh of relief. The NASDAQ closed at a record high yesterday. The Dow and the S&P 500 touched record highs during the trading session. Didn't close there, but uh, we're looking higher today. So maybe more records today. We'll see. Life in the NASDAQ. I'm Jane King. Back to you. Uh, Jane, it, when you ask a personal uh, electronic assistant something and it shoots back an answer, I don't know about you. Sometimes they'll be like, wait, wait a minute. How do you know that? With health information, <laughs> at least Alexa is going to have some real backing here. Uh, they will. So the National Health Service, and this uh, this is Britain, uh, starting there, could come here at some point, depending on how all this goes. But uh, the Britain National Health Service has teamed up with Amazon to bring its information to Alexa. So as part of this plan to make its services available digitally, users can ask things like, Alexa, how do you treat a migraine? Or what are symptoms of chicken pox? And then Alexa will provide information drawn directly from the NHS website. Meanwhile, uh, houses across central Indiana right now, Alexa is looking up how to treat know, migraines. I, and just right. I didn't say it the second time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's also yes. a whole new layer of self-diagnosis, right? We'll see what happens. Jane, thank yeah. you.